God is good. And all the time, God is good. We're truly blessed to be able to study another portion of the Lord's Word and to learn how to apply it to our lives. Um, I want to thank Brother H. Clay Williams for allowing me to uh, come and speak before you. Uh, we come all the way from Santa Monica, California uh, to be with our Chicago family. Amen. Um, the Bible tells us in Psalms, the 23rd chapter, it says, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Amen. He leadeth me beside still waters. Uh, he, leadeth, he makes me lay down in green pastures. He restoreth my soul. Yes, he leadeth me in the path of the righteous for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I shall fear no evil, for thou with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Yes, thou prepare the table before me in the presence of my enemies. Amen. Thou anointed my head with oil. My cup runneth over. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, Amen. and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. Amen. This is the goal. Yes, sir. This is the goal of the Christian, is to be in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. Amen. And we understand that God wants us in his house. He sent his son back to claim us back and to be a ransom for our souls. Amen. Now, we as a church have to learn something. And as a church, I had a wise man tell me one time a story. And there was a man. He was in the midst of the sea. And as he was in the midst of the sea, he was about to drown. He was going down and coming back up, and he thought there was no one to rescue him, but he looked up in the sky, and guess what he saw? A helicopter. And the helicopter hovered over him and threw a lifeline down to the man. And the man grabbed the lifeline with his hand, and he held on, they began to pull him up, and his hand fell off. They threw the lifeline down again, and the man grabbed with his other hand, and he held on tight as he could as they began to pull him up, his other hand fell off. And the man in the helicopter said, now, we're going to do this one more time. I don't know if we're going to be able to save him. And so he threw the lifeline down, and the man got his arm in it this time, and he was, he was for sure going to make it up, but his arm fell off. By this time, the man was upset. He was in the midst of the ocean. He looked up at the helicopter. He said, are you going to save me? And the man in the helicopter says, he says, yeah, if you stay together. <laughs> now, now, now that's the church, isn't it? God wants to save us, but we need to stay together. Amen. Amen. You know, we, we all over the place. We got to be together. Amen. Amen. And we see in the scriptures, if we look at the scriptures, we want to know when we are in God's house. Amen. How are you going to know when you're in God's house when you don't know how to check the standard for what God's house is supposed to be? Amen. Amen. If we look at the Bible and John wants us to know in 1 John chapter 4, verse 6, he says, we are of God that he that knoweth, he that knoweth, God knoweth, knoweth us. Who, oh, go ahead. Help me out, brother. Go ahead. He that knoweth God knoweth us. He that us. knoweth God knoweth us. He that is not of God. He that is not of God. Heareth not us. He heareth not us. Hereby okay? know we the spirit of truth. Hereby we know the spirit of truth. Why do we know? And, and, and the spirit of what? And the spirit of error. We know the spirit of truth and the spirit of error. And see, some things are fundamental. Yes, sir. Fundamental means you got to have them to be able to have the attributes of what you're trying to do later. Yes, sir. Like reading. The alphabet is fundamental to reading, amen? Oh, yes. If you don't know your ABCs, Lord, you can't Lord. read words, Lord, can you? Lord. And we see a lot of grown folks that can't read because they don't know their ABCs. ABCs. And we see a lot of churches that don't know they're doing the right Lord, things Lord. because they don't know the ABCs of the gospel, amen? Lord, Lord. And see, we got to understand what the ABCs of the gospel are. Mm. Now, if you understand what the ABCs of the gospel are, you will be able to see God's church from all the rest of the churches. Lord, Did you know that? Because God's church stands out. Yes. And see, this is why we know it's God's church. I want to help you all today. See, now there's a question that's, that's, that's being posed here. The standard for knowing the spirit of truth from the spirit of error. How are we going to figure this out? Well, we know that in our reading, we know that in our reading, 
that we know the spirit of truth because he says we are of God and he knoweth and that he that knoweth God heareth us. Yeah. Amen. He that is not of God heareth not us. Hereby know we the spirit of truth and the spirit. Now I want to break this down for you. Now we are of God. How do you know you of God? Because you have God's truth. word. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. And God's word is truth, right? Amen. And so we know that if we study the truth, yes. we'll know a lie when we see it, won't we? Oh, yes. You, see, you got the blueprints to, to, to the bank. Yes. You can rob it, can't you? <laughs> see, you got the blueprints to get in the vault. You can get in there and take the money, amen? And see, God has given us the blueprints to get the glory that we're going to have and receive at the end of this world, amen? Lord, Lord. We have the blueprints not only for the end of this world, but we have the blueprints for living a more abundant life Lord, Lord. while we're here on earth, yes. amen? amen. See, God doesn't just want you to have a, 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 a heavenly mindset. He wants you to have an earthly mindset, walking with him and knowing that he has an abundance Lord, to give Lord, you, amen, yes. through his word. Now, what is the standard? What is the standard for knowing the spirit of truth and the spirit of error? Now, I'm an educator, and we have standards all the time. If the kids don't meet these standards, guess what? The school don't get no money, amen? Right. And see, I believe that if a church don't meet those standards, then it's not God's church, amen? If you don't meet the standards of God, how can you sit up there and proclaim that it's God's church, amen? See, we know there's only one church, and that's the church of Christ. He said, Brother Johnson, how do you know that? Because it was started on the day of Pentecost. Yeah. I, I, I can hear it now. When Peter talked to him on the day of Pentecost in Acts chapter 2, right around verse 36, he says, Therefore let all the house of Israel know, Assuredly, the same Jesus whom you have crucified, God has made both Lord and Christ. Yeah. Amen. And they, when they heard this, they were pricked to the heart. And they said to Peter and the rest of the apostles, Men and brethren, what must we do? And Peter said unto them, repent and be baptized, every one of you, for the remission of sins. It will be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins. And you shall receive the gift of what? The Holy Ghost. Of the Holy Spirit. Yep. This promise is to you and to your children and to those that are far off, even as many as our Lord our God, God shall, shall call. call. Amen. And with many other words did he testify and exhort them, saying, save yourself from this untoward generation. And then those that gladly received the word were baptized. And then about 3,000 souls were added unto them that day, amen? And we know clearly they stayed with the church, amen? Because the Bible tells us they continued in the apostles' what? Doctrine, breaking of bread, fellowship. And, fellowship, and prayers, amen? See, and that's what we're doing as God's church. Yes. And we're part of that same church that started on that day, amen? Yes. We ain't part of a church that broke off from a Catholic church, that broke off from a Episcopalian yeah. church, that broke off from a Baptist church, that broke off from another church, and gonna start the church that they wanna start whenever they wanna start it. God only has one church, amen? Let's get this straight now. Because if we don't get it straight, we have no home in glory, amen? Now I want you to understand something. Paul has the keys for us to understand if we're in God's church. Did you know that? There's a key. See, if you, if you got the key, that means you got the answers to the test. Amen? So if somebody come in here and get bad grades on the test, we know because we got the key. Now, what's the key? The key is this. The key is what Paul says. And I want you to look closely at what he says. Now, look closely what Paul says. Paul wants you to understand. In Ephesians chapter 4. Paul says, he says, therefore, the prisoner of the Lord beseech you to walk worthy wherewith the vocation ye have been, you are called, amen? You got to know the job that you're here to do, amen? Mm -hmm. If you don't know the job you're here to do, can you do the job? No, nope. No, you cannot. But Paul wants you to know what your job is. Your job is you have to walk a certain way. You have to walk with wor a worthy way. The way that you know that you meet the standards of God. How do we know it's a worthy way? Because we walk with all lowliness uh -huh. and meekness. Uh -huh. And how else we walk with? With, with long, long suffering. suffering. Forbearing one another in what? In love. love. Endeavoring to keep the unity of the spirit in the bond of peace. Amen? And we know what? What else we know? We know there's one, one body. Mm -hmm. We know there's one spirit. Yes, Even as you are called into one hope of your calling. We know there is one Lord. There is one faith. Yes, there is one baptism. One God and Father of all, above all, through all, and in you all. Amen? See, we understand that there's only one. Amen? 
You can't. How many bodies can you have? Can you? How, how many names you? How many bodies can you have? God only has one body. Amen. Now, now I want you to break this down. I want to break this down for you because I want you to understand. There's a key to being in that body. You can't be in the body without these attributes. Did you know that? You have to have these attributes to be in the body of the Lord. See, the, the body has to be lowly. Lowliness, meekness, long-suffering. You got to be ready to forbear. Now, let's talk about it. Let's break it down. Let's talk about it. I keep clicking the wrong way, but let's talk about it. Now, this is how you know the spirit. Does the spirit walk with lowliness and meekness? Yes. Does the spirit Absolutely. walk with lowliness and meekness? Yes. And I, I should ask the question, does anybody want to walk with lowliness and meekness? Everybody, everybody got swag these days, don't they? You know, brothers got swag. They ain't walking with no, they ain't walking with no meekness and lowliness. They walking, they walking with the attitude of pride, amen? But we can't have that in God's house, can we? We can't have pride in God's house. God's house got to be a place where you meet a meek man, a lowly man. And I want you to understand what a meek and lowly man is. Because nobody wants to do that these days. Even the members of the church. Now, there was these two brothers. And the father was a minister. And the father was making some pancakes. These two boys, they loved these pancakes. They loved them. And so they arguing back and forth. Who going to get the first pancake? The older brother said to the younger brother, I'm taking the first pancake. The younger brother said to the older brother, no, I'm getting the first pancake. And so the father was a minister. So he said, I can teach these boys something right here. Let me teach them a little something. He said, look here. I want you to ask yourself, sons, what would Jesus do? Now, Jesus would say, this is my brother. I love him. So I, I want to make sure that my brother gets the first pancake. Amen. And then the older brother looked at the younger brother and said, you be Jesus. <laughs> See, don't nobody want to walk with me. This is loneliness. Everybody wants to be first. Amen. amen. We live in a prideful world where first means something to some people. Amen. But see, if the spirit is, and see, that's a self-check. See, if you're a, if you're a church, if you're a Church of Christ member, these should be qualities that you have automatically, amen. Because Jesus had these qualities when Jesus was about to die on the cross, and he was in the Garden of Gethsemane. He prayed. He prayed for the apostles to stay together. He prayed for him and God to stay together. But you know, he prayed for us to stay together also. He prayed that we will be one, so that the world would believe that he, that you, he was sent by God, amen. We got to keep on working and fighting to be one. Amen? Amen. We can't be two, three, and four, and somebody else is doing their thing over here and over here, and you walk in the Church of Christ, they got tambourines over here. And you walk over here, there ain't no baptism pool in there. You walk into the church, they, they, they got 10 people singing a song to the church that's sitting there not singing a word. Amen? You, that's not the Church of Christ. The Church of Christ, we sing together. Amen? Amen. We don't sing separately. We don't sing apart. We just one voice raised up to God, and we commune every Sunday. Amen. Amen. On the first day of the week, the apostles came together and did what? Broke bread. Amen. And when they broke bread, Jesus says, do this in remembrance of me. Amen. And so that's why we come together and we break bread for our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ at the communion table every Sunday. Amen. See, when you don't see these things, these things are fundamental to what the Church of Christ stands for. Amen. Now, let's look at the scripture. Now, lowliness. Who wants to be lowly? Is there a quality in being low? Look at what lowliness is. Lack of vanity or self-importance, humbleness, humidity, meekness, modesty, meekness, quiet, gentle, and easily imposed on, submissive, amen? Submissive, yielding, obedient, compliant, tame, biddable, tactable, acquiescent, humble, differential, Timid, unprotesting, unresisting, like the lamb to the slaughter. Amen. Who represents that? Jesus Christ represents that. Amen. amen. And we sit up and we say, okay, um, I, I got too much pride to accept this. I got too much pride to, 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 to forgive my brother. I got too much pride. He did me wrong. I'm not going to let it go. If anybody should have pride, it should be Jesus, shouldn't it? Amen. He came down from his throne of glory. He came down from heaven to die for mankind. If you, who can ever go lower than meekness than Jesus, amen? And if we're God's children, we should be seeking to be like him. Is that right? We should be meek and lowly men. We come together. We should be working together as brothers in love, understanding that we all bow down to Jesus Christ. See, in meekness and lowliness, that don't mean I'm meek and lowly and speaking the word. I'm bold, amen? 
I'm meek and lowly in my idea of who I am in the sight of God. Amen. Amen. I'm not worthy of what he's given me. I'm not worthy of the sacrifice of Jesus Christ. I'm not worthy of the things that God has done for me. But I understand that he loves me. Amen. And through my meekness and lowliness and understanding I'm not worthy, God lifts me up. Amen. Amen. He lifts up the humble and he resists the proud, doesn't he? So we have to understand that Jesus was meek, that Jesus was lowly. And we look at some examples of lowliness and meekness. Let's take a look at some. Go to Numbers uh, chapter 12, verse 3. And then go to Matthew chapter 11, verse 29. Let's take a look at who was meek and lowly. Who was meek and lowly? And is it a good quality? to have, to be meek and lowly. Now the man Moses was very meek. Now Moses was meek. Moses, the man that came and told Pharaoh to let my people go, he was a meek man. Go ahead. Above all the men which Ab were upon the face of the earth. Above all the men at that time which were on the face of the earth, he was the meekest man, meaning that he would do whatever God told him to do. Amen. Amen. Whatever God told him to do, he was not too proud not to do it. He didn't shake his little bony fist up and say, I'm not going to do it. He bowed down to God and was obedient to God. Therefore, he's with God now today. Amen. Amen. What does Matthew 11 and 29 say? Matthew 11 and 29. It says, take my yoke take, upon you mm -hmm. and learn take, of me. For I am meek, meek and lowly, lowly in heart, heart and ye shall, shall find rest unto, unto your, your soul. Souls. Who said that? Jesus. Jesus. Amen. Jesus is meek and lowly in heart. He wants to, you to find rest unto your soul through him. Amen. See, if we are not working on being meek and lowly, we're not working on staying together, are we? Lord, Lord. See, if we got too much pride, we come together as a church, somebody's going to get their feelings hurt, ain't they? <laughs> and when people, you know what happens when people get their feelings hurt. <laughs> They don't come back, do they? Lord, Lord. You know, you can't, you can't have all this pride in God's church. God's got church has got to be a place of love. That brings me to my next point. This is how you test the spirit. Is it meek and lowly? I'm going the wrong way. Is it meek and lowly? Now, this is how you test the spirit. Does the spirit walk with long suffering and love? Does it walk with long suffering and love? And most of us want to walk in long suffering, but not in love. I'll tell you what I'm talking about. Um, we do stuff for folks, and the whole time we do it, we complaining. We complain the whole time, we, I'm doing this for the Lord, but you lucky I'm with the Lord, because if I wasn't with the Lord, I wouldn't be doing this for you. You happy, I'm, you better be lucky I'm a Christian, because this wouldn't be going down right now. You know, you know, I tell you what, if, if, if you come outside one more time late, when I'm giving you a ride to Sunday school, you're going to have to walk. We're we, we going to complain while we're doing it, amen? We, 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 and and we, we got to learn a lesson about all that complaining. We know some children that came out of Egypt land, they got left in the desert for what? For complaining, amen? God ain't got no time for complaining. We, he needs some compliant people. He needs some people that he can work with, some people that are really to really know what long suffering is. Amen. And see, I want to help you understand this because we don't know what long suffering is and love. But this word is going to help you. Do you know what the word forbearing means? Let's tell, let me tell you what the word forbearing means. Forbearing is an adjective of a person, patient and restrained. He proved to be remarkably forbearing whenever I was impatient or angry. He didn't get angry. Amen. Amen. Forbearing. What is forbearing? Patience, tolerance, easy, easy going. Wouldn't you like to meet a, wouldn't you like to meet a whole bunch of easy going people? Amen. <laughs> the forgiving, merciful, and understanding. Amen. See, these are qualities that a Christian must have. And if you're going to be loving someone and forbearing, you got to be patient. Amen. You got to be tolerant. They ain't always going to say and do the things you want them to do. Sometimes they're going to get on your last nerve. Amen. Amen. Anybody ever had somebody get on your last nerve? We got to be patient and forbearing. You know, you know, you know we, some people, they, they walk around with an attitude. And so we got to break that attitude down. They had, they had this man, he's he sleeping with his wife. And he, he pulled the covers back and she was frowned all up and, and her, her fist was balled up. <laughs> he, she was all tight and balled up and he, he was concerned about it so he woke her up. He said, baby, why are you sleeping like that with your fist balled up, all frowned up? And she said, in case somebody try to start something. <laughs> <laughs> See, love has got to be forbearing. We can't walk around with I wish you would attitude. We walk around, I wish you would. 
I wish your brother would. They had, they had this, they had, you, you, you have, they had this couple. They going, they going to, to a game, and 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 one of their friends in the back says, you know, I hope nobody's in our seats. And 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 and, and the husband said, I wish somebody would be in our seats. <laughs> I wish somebody would. We can't walk around with that attitude. We got to walk around with a loving attitude, Amen. forbearing one another. Amen? Amen. He just gave me ten minutes to go, so I better hurry up. Amen. Now. This is what love looked like. Let's break it down. See, this is what Jesus' love looked like. See, love suffers long and is kind. Yes, sir. Yeah. Love does not envy. I don't want what you got. Amen. I'm thankful for what God gave me. Amen. Amen. Love does not parade itself around like they, I'm all that. I'm better than you. Look at you. You all got some, some snobby Christians? You ever, a Christian and a snob shouldn't go, to, go together, should it? It shouldn't go together. A, a, a Christian shouldn't be looking down on other folks, amen? amen. We're, not, we're not supposed to be all puffed up and rude. If you're going to be like that, how are you going to lead someone to Christ, amen? amen? Love does not behave rudely. I do it, but I don't want to, amen? Uh, love does not seek its own. Well, if it ain't got nothing in it for me, I ain't doing it, amen? Je what if Jesus said that? And now watch this one. Love is not provoked. That means I'm not going to let you make me get mad. Amen. No matter what you do, I'm going to stay in my right mind, amen? amen. Like, I heard somebody say, you ain't going to make me come outside of myself, amen? <laughs> See, think no evil. I don't think bad thoughts about nobody, amen? Well, why? They ain't did nothing wrong. Some people just think you bad, just look at you and automatically judge you, amen? amen. See, love does not rejoice in sin. You know, we, sometimes folks get happy when people fall off. We don't want nobody to fall off. We want to bring them back, amen, by the grace of God. See, we don't love iniquity. We don't love sin. And love rejoices in what? The, truth. The, the truth. truth. the Bible says you shall know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. Amen? Yeah. See, the truth lets you know you're doing the right thing. Amen? Amen? Love bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, and endures all things. And who's this love that we're trying to be like? The love of Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen. See, this is the love that the church needs. Amen? And if we have love like this, guess what? We can stay together. That helicopter is going to pull us up. Amen? amen. Our hands and arms ain't going to fall off. Amen? amen. Now, last point. Does the Spirit preach the truth about salvation? Does the Spirit preach the truth about salvation? There was a, a man, and he cleaned porta potties for a living. And he didn't have much education, but he had to do what he had to do to survive, amen? And he collected bottles on the side, but he heard the word of God. And he came to God's church, Ooh, so he thought it was God's church. And he said, the minister gave the sermon, and he gave the call to come down and be saved. The man came down. And when the man came down, he was not smelling all right. His fingernails was dirty, his hair was messed up, and he, he looked a little scruffed up. So when he came down, he told the minister, he said, I want to be baptized. And the minister looked at him and saw the scruffiness of his, of his, of his look and saw the filthy fingernails and, saw, and he smelled the smell. And he said, you know what? I need you to go home and pray. And then if you want to be baptized, come back. The man went home and he prayed. He came back the next week. Minister gave the call, he came down, wanted to be baptized, but he was still disheveled. He still had the scruffy look. He still had the fingernails that were dirty. He still had the, the smell that was not good. And the minister looked at him again and he said, I still think you need to go home and pray some more. So one day the man was out and the minister saw him out. And he hadn't came back to church. And the minister thought about it. He said, I need to go talk to him and see what, what, what's wrong here. What did he pray about? He, he said, he went to the man and he said, how come you don't show up at church no more? I thought you wanted to be baptized. Where'd you go? And the man said, I don't need to be in your church no more. He said, you don't want to be saved? You want to be in God's church? He said, I had to talk with Jesus. And he said, he's been trying to get in your church for years, and he can't even get in there. <laughs> See, some churches like that, amen? You got to have your tax report ready before you get in church, amen? You got to come from a, a special family before we allow you in. We got to look at your pedigree before you become a Christian. But that's not in God's house, amen? In God's house, we preach the truth, amen? amen? We let everyone know. We let everyone know there is one body, which is the Church of Christ. Amen. We let everyone know there is one Holy Spirit amen. that is in us, 
that God has given us. Even as you are called into one hope of your calling, amen, there's only one call, and that comes from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And that comes, and he, and he told one man, he told Peter, he said, whatever you bound on earth, I'll bound in heaven. And that was, and it, Peter started bounding up when? On the day of Pentecost, when the church of Christ was started. That's why we see Paul tell him in Romans 16, 16, he says, greet one another with a holy kiss. The churches of Christ salute you, amen. We have to understand who we are. Sometimes we, we look out and we see all these other churches, and, and I, I call it a little a, a Canaanitism. Y'all know, y'all ever heard of Canaanitism? Back, back in the book of Judges, when the, the Jews had the Canaanites living amongst them, they started serving Canaanite gods, didn't they? Yes, sir. And they, they, they turned their back on God, amen? So we can't look for the folks, I got five minutes, let me hurry up. We, we, can't, we, can't, <laughs> we can't look uh, to be like other churches. Other churches need to look to be like us, amen? amen. We ain't got to change up and, and try to be like them. We need to keep doing what God tells us to do, amen? If we, if we serve God, we know we're going to be all right. If we preach the truth, we know we're going to be all right. And what's the truth about salvation? The truth of salvation, I wish I had more time, but I got a little time, so I'm going to talk to you a little while about salvation. Now, the fact of the matter is that Romans 10, 17 says that faith come by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Hebrews chapter 11 at verse 6. It tells us that without faith, it's impossible to please him. He that comes to God must believe that he is and that he's a rewarder of those that diligently seek him. Jesus told him in Luke 13, 3. He said, unless you repent, ye shall all likewise perish. Amen. And Jesus made it clear there's something you got to do before you die. Jesus says in Matthew 10, 32. If you confess me before men, I'll confess you before my Father who's in heaven. But if you deny me before men, I'll deny you before my Father who's in heaven. And then there's something you got to do once you confess. You have to be baptized. Jesus told us in Matthew, right around chapter, Mark, Mark chapter 16, right around verse 15 through 16. He says, go and preach the gospel to every creature. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. He that believeth not shall be damned. Jesus not only said it then, he all said it in Matthew chapter 28, going around the eighth chapter, the eighth verse. He said, and Jesus came back, at the well, we came back from the dead. And when he came back, he had a special mountain prepared where he was going to send them out on a great commission. And when they got there, Jesus spake unto them, right around verse 18, Matthew 28, Jesus spake unto them and said, all power has been given unto me in heaven and in earth. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, and in the name of the Holy Spirit. So we understand that we have the standard of salvation. The standard of salvation comes from Jesus himself. Yes. Now I want you to understand something. Jesus set the standard yes. for how we save. Yes, sir. If we look at the book of Matthew, and we look at right around chapter 3, and we look at verse 13, the Bible says, Then cometh Jesus. From Galilee to Jordan, unto John, to be baptized of him. But John forbade him. John said, I have need to be baptized of thee. It comes thou unto me. And Jesus said unto him, Suffer it to be so for now. For thus it becometh us to fulfill all righteousness. Amen. See, Jesus set the standard. Amen. And then John, John suffered him. And when John suffered him, Jesus, when he was baptized, came up straightway out of the water. And lo, the heavens were opened unto him. And he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove, alighting upon him. And lo, a voice from heaven saying, this, this is, my, is beloved my beloved son, son whom in I'm whom well I'm pleased. well pleased. Amen. Now, let me, let me, let me go back and let you get, get this whole sermon. Now, the standard for knowing the spirit of, of truth from the spirit of error, does the spirit walk with lowliness and meekness? Amen. Yes, He's got to walk with lowliness and meekness because that's what Jesus walked. Amen. Does the spirit walk with long suffering and love? Amen. See, as a church, how are we walking as a church? Is there love in the church? Amen. Amen. We got cliques in the church. Amen. How are we loving each other in the church? Are we loving each other how we want to love or how Jesus loves? See, some, some people's love hurt, don't it? All love ain't good love, but Jesus' love is good love. Does the spirit preach the truth about salvation? Amen. So when you look for the standard of knowing the truth of truth, the spirit of truth, and the spirit of error, Look the, the, the Bible for your answers, amen? amen? And I'll tell you where you can go. Go to Ephesians chapter 4 and start at verse 1, and you will know what God's church looks like. Right. And nobody can fool you.
because there's a lot of antichrists in the world right now, and they want, they want to fool you. Lord, they want to Lord. take your soul, and they, they want to lead you in the wrong direction for their own benefit. I just got zero minutes left. I just want to say God bless you, and I hope I said something that encouraged you. Amen. Praise God.